As we arrived at the waterhole early this morning, we were met by various herds of zebra, oryx, and springbok. We noticed oryx in the water <laughs> and zebra also, and it's the first time we'd actually seen them climb into the water the way that they had. But then, of course, <laughs> I saw my favorite animals. First there was one, then two. This pair of black-backed jackals were hunting birds for breakfast. A lot of birds were gathered on the water's edge and flocks were coming and going, mainly Cape turtle doves um, and also some laughing doves. The jackals were determined to have their share of these birds and they applied various techniques. The one technique was to trot up and down and see if they could actually chase it and run these birds in. Another technique was to lie in wait. I just was amazed at the camouflage. If I looked away and looked back, I couldn't find them. They melted so incredibly well into the background. Well, patience and perseverance pays off, and bingo, here's the first course for breakfast. very leafy, thick Kigalia trees that are scattered around in the forests here are the real focus at this time of year. This is where we found this young male leopard waiting for a little bit of activity. A troop of baboons were the first to come through. Just the calling and uh, glimpses of them in the forest was enough to send this young male down his tree and sort of scurrying away into the Latajua bush, good thick bush to hide in, and that's where he stayed. and Impala were the first antelope to, to wander past. I think he, he was asleep, really. He showed no interest in those Impala until they had almost completely passed. This is when he caught sight of the small herd of kudu. Incredibly beautiful antelope, these kudu. Quite big. They have these huge ears that sort of rotate completely around the head and their secret really is moving almost completely silently through the bush and just continually listening. It was when the entire herd started browsing very very close to where he was he actually stalked further into a closer position. The leopard actually did hit the side of that kudu and just wasn't able to hold on. Exposed and his cover blown, he lay on the side of an anthill. Clearly a little irritated by what just went on. It's a real guttural roar that these kudus have. It's, uh, it's actually a bark. 
uh, very, very loud. With the alarm calls from the kudu, the baboons who weren't far away um, picked up on it and started calling and uh, barking as well. And this was the time that the young male decided to head back to his litajua bush. are black-winged butterfly cicadas and um, very easy to approach large cicadas are very attractive colors on the body and the wing case as well I've been looking around trying to find one that is actually calling of course you can hear that there is calling all around me, but uh, very few individuals at any given time are actually producing this sound. Here, yeah, this one clearly is. As is typical in this species, they will call for about a minute or so and then fly to another tree and start calling again at that tree. And they'll do that several times and then there'll be a long period, it seems, of uh, rest between calls. Some trees had several individuals on and on one tree I counted up to 10 I must say this is a species I've never noticed before, never come across to my knowledge. Apparently it's reasonably common and widespread. Delighted to have been able to see it today and uh, catch a, a few glimpses of some of the individuals doing that famous cicada call, one of the loudest sounds in the natural world. followed the Dra Bateti riverbed and we came to these, these pools and around these pools there were so many animals that had been drawn there by the lack of water in this area and the harsh environment and the, and the heat. The leopard face vulture elbowed his way through the whiteback vulture down to drink. These leopard faced vultures are the largest species of vulture and also the most dominant. High up on the bank, a marabou stalk stood among other vultures and he seemed quite content there with them. He is also a carrion feeder. And these carrion feeders, they don't have any feathers on their head or their neck. And this is because when they feed on carcasses, they don't get blood on their feathers. And amongst the dust and brown feathers, uh, we were treated with a burst of colour and a battler eagle flew in and uh, made, him, made his way towards the water. He seemed aware and he was constantly looking, checking everything out. The battler eagle is also a carrion feeder when he gets the chance and maybe with all the vulture around he was, he was drawn there, hoping uh, that he might get a meal.
He didn't stay with us for long and uh, looked around and then flew off. 